What is up guys, Aaron here, Curls in the Rack, back at Gaines for another video. Now, I posted something on Instagram today showing a little teaser trailer of what I'm about to show you guys, how to build. Full, step by step, I'm going to do it in two parts. But I put it on there, in surplus strength, they reached out and they said, wow, thanks for showing our patented pending, they said patented, but it's patent pending, design, and uh, thanks a lot, you know. I don't know. They could have been really thanking me. I, I don't know. But I don't know. Uh, the purpose and what I was going to say in the video, now I'm a little conflicted on the intro here, is that it takes a long time to do a DIY project like this. It takes a lot of time. Okay, I said eight hours, but I'm guesstimating. I, I have a family, wife, a job. I don't really care. I'm not doing this to make money. This is not a career thing for me. I'm just trying to show you guys some cool things and I, that I'm proud of making. And, and, you know, I said I was going to up my skills here in, uh, in 2022. And so I wanted to weld something. I went over the website. I saw this. I was like, wow, that's really cool. I don't have one to measure or anything like that. Or I just looked at it and I said, I think I see how that goes together. Let me try to make one. And I, I made one. But the thing is, is that, uh, I was going to say, sorry, I'm rambling now, but I was going to say, Hey, $500 for this thing is a great value. I personally, if you offered me $500, wouldn't make this for you because it takes a lot of time. Now I'm using hand tools and you know, I'm, I'm doing everything in the garage. I don't have a fab that makes these things. Okay. So maybe it's a little cheaper for them to make it, but it is going to be cheaper in supplies, but it's going to take you a long time. That's all I'll say before we get into the build. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you little segments of the build and I'm going to voice over them. So I'll voice over and I'll come in when I think something needs to be explained. And at the end, we'll try it out and you guys can see it and uh, we'll go from there. So uh, Aaron, the social media assassin, out. All right, guys. So most importantly, we're going to need a couple pieces of equipment. We're going to need a bracket that's going to go over the top of the 3 by 3 cross member. That way we can make our holes and pin it there. The inside diameter needs to be three inches. And then we need another three by three or whatever you can find that uh, we can put our rollers into. So once you have those, uh, we're good to go and uh, we can start measuring and cutting. And our next step is going to be measuring this guy. Now it's a 27 inch cross member. So uh, what you're going to do is you're going to go over 15 inches and you're going to start with your cut there. So you're going to measure what your bracket is going to take up in there but measure over 15 inches first. Measure for the bracket, and then whatever is left on the end, that'll be the side that you're gonna pull from because you don't want the bumpers to be smashing into the rack. So that's why one side is longer, so you can pull up and down without it hitting your bottom cross member. And I should also mention that you could, should leave about a quarter of an inch at the bottom because you don't obviously want to go all the way through it. We want that support from the beam, and um, you don't need to go all the way. What I decided to use to make my cuts really easy, clean, very nice is a grinder, an angle grinder with a cutting disc. You can use a jigsaw and you could even use a hacksaw if you really wanted to or a Dremel. It's just going to take a really long time. Uh, this was the smoothest, easiest way and the fastest way I could find to do this part of the process. Now, this goes without saying, guys, but I'll say it anyways. Please make sure you use flame retardant gloves, protect your eyes, protect your ears, and also protect your clothes. There's going to be a lot of sparks, especially when you are welding and when you're grinding. So be safe and don't do anything stupid. Now, this is not the 1920s and we don't enjoy watching silent films anymore. So I will go ahead and throw a beat behind this. Now, after I went ahead and did my initial cuts, the big ones all the way down to that line at the bottom, um, I didn't use the grinder on there because the blade is so big that I would risk cutting into the sides of the metal that I didn't want to. So I went ahead and just finished up this part with a Dremel to be a little bit more precise. Um, and the reason I did this is I didn't want to have to fix it up later and have a bunch of you know, cuts in the metal that I had to then throw weld on and then grind down again. Uh, there were spots that I did go over too much, 
but um, it is not the end of the world. You can just weld over those and grind them down and like, make them look just like the piece of metal. That's why I like using metal rather than wood because it's a little bit more forgiving if you make a mistake. Yoxie. All right, and then once you go ahead and make all your lines, there's probably gonna be some metal that's still touching on the corners, so you just gotta be careful. Once you disconnect the metal on all the sides, the chunk should just fall out of there. And hopefully if you did everything right, your bracket will fit inside there. Um, obviously too small, it's not gonna fit, and too big, you're gonna have a big gap. You're gonna have to throw a lot of weld on to the metal to get them to connect. So you don't want a big gap and you also don't want uh, it to be too small. I'd say, you know, it'd be smarter to go too small uh, and have a tight fit rather than it being too loose because you can always just grind it down later if it's too small to make it fit. The next step is to remove all the paint where we're gonna weld because you can't obviously weld over the top of paint or it's really not a good idea anyways if you want that weld to hold. Uh, so I just used, and what they call this is a tiger's paw, just a grinding disc. I went ahead and got a high grit one just because I knew I was gonna be using it for polishing and making it look real smooth, but it also works well to take off the paint where we're gonna do our welds. The next step is to go ahead and do our welds. Now, if you don't know how to weld, I didn't know how to weld as of like, a month or two ago, but I just went on YouTube and there's plenty of videos to show you different kinds of welds, what you should be looking for, all sorts of things. So my motto is always, you know, anything I don't know how to do is just something I haven't tried yet. So that's why I love YouTube rather than Instagram is because people are actually teaching you how to do things. So you can go on there. I'll even put a link in the description of where I went to learn how to weld. Um, and so you, if you want to try this, you can try it. If you don't, uh, you can always attach brackets on the outside of this. Since we're not going in the middle with any sort of um, pulley or cable or anything like that, if you wanna attach this, just get an angle iron bracket and then uh, put some screws through it or some um, bolts through it and uh, it will hold the same. The next thing we are gonna do is we are going to mark where our wheel is gonna go or our pulley wheel. So um, what I had to do since this is a reused piece of upright and it has holes in it, I had to go in the middle of those two holes. So that's what I'm measuring for right here. Uh, you also wanna make sure that you leave enough on the end so that the wheel doesn't hang over the lip because we are gonna be putting some bolts there to secure the cable in place and to prevent it from going over the top once we have it in. Now, I did screw up on one of the ends, or I didn't screw up, but uh, I did not have enough space. So I had to uh, add some horns on the, on the front, which wasn't the end of the world. It was pretty easy. I used some of the leftover metal, and I'll show that here in a little bit. But um, this is basically what you're gonna do, so that way we know the, the gap to cut out, and also where our wheels are gonna go. And the next step is basically to cut these guys using that same cutting disc that we used before. And also once we got to the end to make it more precise and uh, is to go ahead and use the Dremel um, and then make sure we don't go over too much. But if you do, that's okay. And I did on one of these spots and that's where I had to sort of just throw some weld and then uh, smooth it out. And
Next thing I did is because I wanted to smooth out and not have any sharp metal on the inside is I went ahead and took that same sanding tiger paw that we used before to remove the paint and smooth out the edges. Now after that, there's still some underneath the bottom of the lip that I wanted to get out, some metal shavings that were there. So I went and just took a grinding bit, Dremel, and uh, made it all smooth. Next, we're gonna go ahead and make our holes for the wheels to go in, our pulley wheels. And also, we're gonna make our 5 8 holes for where our pop pins are gonna go on the other portion of the bracket. Um, I would recommend using 3-in-1 oil, doing a pilot hole first, and then going up to your the bit you're gonna use. And I'll have all the details on um, the website or in the description here on uh, the bits that you need to use. And because even though you're making a 5 8 hole, the pop pins don't necessarily fit in there perfectly if you didn't line them up perfectly. And also there's just not a lot of wiggle room. So what I did is I kind of bore that out with the 5 8 bit and then I smooth it up with the Dremel bit. So that way everything's smooth, there's no sharp metal and uh, the pop pins go in smoothly. Now, I didn't go ahead and show how I did the painting in this video, but I will be showing how to do the painting uh, in the next one. So be on the lookout for part two. There you guys have it. That was part one. Uh, part two is going to be the uh, roller installations, what hardware you need for that. And then also we're going to make some cables and we are going to make a loading pin. So before that though, I thought I'd show you the finished product so you can see I didn't botch it. And you hear that? No, you don't. It is super smooth. These rollers are amazing. The thing feels a lot better than those janky cable systems that you see all over Instagram now, the Pulley Pros and all, everybody's got one, right? I originally had the Spud Ink ones and uh, those, those they work fine. But you know what? There's some grinding on the cable. It's not wrapped in a rubber coating. Uh, and this is a great design. It gets you away from the weight because there's nothing worse than pulling down the weight and having it swing into your knees or hit you in the shins. And most importantly, shout out to Surplus Strength for inventing this thing. It's a great design, great idea. Simple, but you don't always have to reinvent the wheel. Uh, and uh, be on the lookout for part two. Until next time, guys. Peace.